All right, what's up, everyone? Um, today, I want to talk about Pulse Audio. Do you need Pulse Audio on Linux? Is it actually required? Is it a terrible thing that's destroying Linux? I want to give my opinions on this. Let's find out. Um, so first, if you're a noob, if you don't know anything about what Pulse Audio is, if you've just heard the name, what is it? Okay, it is an audio system that is used on Linux. Now, Linux by default has something called ALSA. A-L-S-A, I think it's like something, Linux, sound, whatever. It doesn't matter what it stands for. But it's built into, it's built on top of the Linux kernel. Okay, it's the basic audio system. Pulse Audio is something that you can put on top of ALSA. And the reason being, also is very hard to use, okay? And I'm going to talk about that in this video. By itself, also is, is very restricted, okay? So Pulse Audio is this system on top of ALSA, and it's a little controversial for several reasons. First off, people say Pulse Audio is total bloat. It uh, generates a lot of problems. That people run into a bunch of issues with it. And, uh, you know, most importantly, right, it's written by Leonard Pottering, uh, who everyone likes to hate. He's the guy who wrote System D. Now, as it happens, I, uh, you know, on this channel, we are big proponents of minimalism, okay? And Pulse Audio and System D are both not minimalist systems. However, I have actually defended System D in the past. Um, you know, I don't, I don't use it, uh, but I think it's, uh, you know, I don't think it's that bad. I don't, I don't think it's like destroying the world. A lot of people talk about it like it's the end of the world or something like that. Um, uh, and, you know, there are bad things about it, but I, I think they're just overblown. Okay, that, you can watch my original video on that if you want. Uh, and Pulse Audio, I actually have a different opinion on this. Now, first off, I do think that the complaints that people make about Pulse Audio, like the complaints about System D, are, like, drastically overstated. But more importantly, the, the important thing is this. Like, the people who are complaining about Pulse Audio have evidently not tried to live without it, okay? That, that's what, like, Pulse Audio functions. It has errors. But the alternative is a non-functioning audio system. Now, ALSA theoretically can do everything that Pulse Audio can do. But here's the is issue with ALSA. First off, let, what, let me tell you, in case you haven't done it, let's say you install a Linux distribution that does not install Pulse Audio. Most of them install Pulse Audio just because w when you have Pulse Audio installed, things work the way you expect them to work. But let's say you install one that doesn't have Pulse Audio. How does it work? Well, if you install Arch or Gen 2 or whatever, um, you know, just a minimal install, uh, and then you boot up, uh, let's say you, you know, play some music in uh, your music player, and then you try and watch a YouTube video at the same time. You want music in the background. Maybe you're one of those, uh, that's a weird thing, but people do it, okay? Um, well, p also by itself is actually not going to work. It can't play two sources at the same time. It cannot do that. You have to go into ALSA, and you have to add this configuration file. Now, it's not just like activate this. It's not like a simple configuration, uh, it's like, uh, the also configuration file is actually very hard to understand, frankly. Um, so, but you have to add a couple of lines that say, okay, I want to activate this module that allows me to actually play two things at the same time. That's what you have to do with also. Or let's say what all nearly always happens is you install, uh, you know, on your fresh install, uh, you realize that also is not loud enough. It nearly never is. It's like 100%. It, it's like this little whisper. Okay, so you want to increase the volume, the maximum volume. That is another thing that you have to add to your also config. And it is not just like change the maximum volume. That's not what it is. It is this complicated looking stuff like also configuration. It's like things in a bracket. Oh, well, the other, I should say, this isn't like a thing where you can just read the manual. There is no also documentation. This is what I need people to understand. You cannot just look something up in, uh, you know, the manual. You cannot even look it up online because although all of these people are telling you not to use Pulse Audio and use ALSA only, they're not actually doing it. So they don't have, there's not like a place online you can look where it says, oh, this is how you actually do things on ALSA. It doesn't happen. People don't actually just use ALSA alone unless they're just being minimalists for the, like, and they don't care about the dysfunction. Here's some other stuff that it try, try, I, uh, I've actually d asked people in the past, show me how to do this on ALSA. No one, I'm sure it's possible, but no one has ever told me how to do it. Um, I want to be able to record audio output on my computer. Let's say that I'm having a chat with someone, uh, like, a, 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 over the internet, and I want to record the audio from my microphone, and I want to record the audio that I hear from them. How do you do that on ALSA? How do you do it? Like, there, there is no built, by default, also cannot take audio output as an input, okay? You have to manually figure out how that works, and I, I have asked many people, I, I've never run into anyone who knows how to do that. It is possible, 
But you also, and the other thing about the also configuration file is if you want to do multiple of these things at the same time, that's actually a big rigmarole. Like it's easy to change the maximum volume, well, easy, quote unquote. It's not really easy, but you can figure out how to change the maximum source, uh, like the maximum volume of one of your outputs. You can also figure out how you can have multi multiple um, uh, uh, things on your computer playing output, okay? at the same time. But try and do both of them at once, and you, you realize, oh, it's not just copying and pasting these two blocks. You have to make them compatible. Sh cat, shut up. Seriously. This cat won't shut up. It's just been meowing the whole video. What do you want? I just fed you. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, so, like, doing all the stuff on Ulsa, like, the thing is, ultimately, I am not convinced that there are actually people out there who have fully functioning audio setups on Ulsa. I'm just not convinced. Like, there are people who use Ulsa because, oh, it's minimal, uh, and, you know, I want to be able to brag on the internet. Oh, but I, I, I can't actually do all this other stuff that people consider basic. Okay, another thing that Pulse Audio does automatically, and Pulse Audio, of course, does all of this stuff automatically. Uh, same thing if you want to, um, uh, another very basic thing. When I unplug my headphones, I want the volume to be at a, a different level. From once, you know, if you if you have like, a, or let's say you're playing music sort of loud on your computer, it let's say it's at like a hundred percent, and that might be you know an acceptable volume uh, to listen to music depending on what kind of speakers you have. Well, then you plug in your headphones, okay? Because you want to take your laptop off, you take it somewhere else. You don't want people to hear your music, okay? Well, uh, if you do that, it's going to be blaring in your ears at one hundred percent, which is much much louder if you're using also. Pulse Audio, on the other hand, automatically says, okay, for each different, you know, if they, if they plug in headphones, they're going to want a different volume. So we're going to store whatever volume they set last time for their headphones, and we're going to use that instead of, uh, you know, just keep, you know, carrying over the volume. So that's one, another one of these things. So when it comes to Pulse Audio, yes, Pulse Audio does terrible things. There are terrible errors that people complain about with it all the time. Oh, I, gotta, I had to reboot Pulse Audio because it messed this thing up. Uh, actually, let me tell you some of the things that I'm struggling with right now with Pulse Audio. Biggest annoyance right now is if you install my dot .files, okay, there's this stupid incompatibility with Chrome-based browsers that they don't automatically st start Pulse Audio because it's fluid synth or something like that, okay? Whatever, I got to figure out what, how exactly to fix this in a principled way. Um, but, uh, you know, so if I, if you install my dot .files as it is right now and pull up the browser and try to watch a YouTube video, the audio doesn't properly start. You have to start the audio, you have to listen to some other audio to start Pulse Audio before it actually plays. It's so stupid. I gotta figure out how to fix that. That is a Pulse Audio problem. Or, re well, really, it's some other application not properly starting Pulse Audio. But that would not be a problem that I, or maybe it wouldn't be a problem I've had on uh, also. I don't know. But I'll just say that's one problem that I've had on Pulse Audio. Uh, other thing, other annoyances that I have on Pulse Audio, you might see that some videos I start up with my audio manager pulled up. That's because every once in a while, because really what I'm doing is I'm checking to see what source, what input it's actually recording. Because sometimes Pulse Audio will decide, you know what, I'm not going to record off of his microphone. I'm going to decide that the, the real default input is his uh, the little nasty microphone on the computer. Okay? So uh, those are two big annoyances of Pulse Audio that have actually cost me a lot of time. But we, if I'm comparing Pulse Audio to Ulsa, there's no contest because Ulsa is not a functioning audio system unless you somehow magically know how it actually works, which no one does. There is no institutional knowledge out there. You cannot look up online how to actually configure things on Ulsa, okay? It doesn't, like, there's no page. There's no manual. No one actually knows how Ulsa works. People just complain about it all the time, or, or they get, complain about Pulse Audio, and they say that Ulsa is better because they're not actually doing audio work with Ulsa. Also, it works if you, like, you know, if you just want to play, if you, if you are just consuming product on YouTube and, uh, you know, maybe you have two input sources or something like that, but you're not doing anything complicated. For anything, e even, you know, as I said, recording audio output, that's something really basic. Also, I've never figured out how to do anything on Also, There's no good directions for how to do things on Also. There's no good documentation. It is just not workable, and I'm not convinced that the people who say that they use, and, and I mean, like, I have tried hard to use just also. When I used Void Linux, Void Linux did not work well with Pulse Audio, so I was like, I'm just going to force myself to use also. Did not work, okay? It was a terrible time. You can actually look back at those videos I recorded with also, and the audio quality is awful because I had to, like, artificially increase 
like the 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 sound of the input and it ended up uh, you know there's just all this nasty gain and all this kind of stuff and of course the documentation for also is not out there to actually fix it things actually work on pulse audio pulse audio has a lot of problems pulse audio can be an annoyance but it actually functions it actually functions like that like people think that we're all about oh like looking cool on the internet and using fancy computers that uh uh, are hard to use so we can brag. No, it's about having a functioning computer. And if someone wants to give me like the master also config that does everything right, I will happily use it. I will happily never t touch Pulse Audio again. If someone wants to write great also deck documentation or like show me this magical page that I've never discovered that tells you how to do everything on also, I will gladly use it. But right now also is not functional. So people who complain about, you know, Pulse Audio, I just don't. All right, that, that's it. That's my, that's my take on this. People ask me every once in a while, so there it is.